Hey, what's up everybody? Let's check out some of the new UI updates to Photoraw 2024. I'll show you how to find your way around the app and how to quickly access common browsing and editing features. So let's jump into it. Let's check out this new interface. So inside of Photoraw 2024 here, let's just take a look at some of these UI updates. The biggest UI update, or at least the one that sort of catches your eye right out of the gate, is the left-hand side of the screen now contains all of the module selectors. So if I select a photograph here, I can go into the edit module there by selecting edit. I have the browse module right there that I am already inside of. And then I have this more button that I can select and I have all of these different areas that I can access as well. So if I'm looking to head right into a specific tab or I have multiple layers that I want to merge together, I can access all of those here within this more button there. Now another thing inside of the browse module that's switched up a little bit is the browsing and cataloging. So if I open up this left bumper here, I now have these three tabs for my browsing and cataloging. I have my catalogs, I have browse, and I have presets. So I can quickly access my catalog folders there, but if I need to, I can jump directly into this browse tab and immediately browse through my different categories, such as my favorites, my albums, recent, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're used to using the Legacy Browse tab where it contains your catalogs and all of these different options, just hold down Command and Comma on your keyboard. We'll pull up our preferences, and then we can enable this Legacy Browse tab option. If I select that and I choose OK, this will place that Browse tab into its own separate area that contains all of your catalog folders and all of those Browse categories as well. I'm just gonna go back and disable that. I sort of enjoy the, the new layout there where I just have these three separate tabs. But again, if you're looking to keep that Browse tab uh, sort of just all compiled together, you can use that Legacy Browse option in your preferences. Another thing that's been moved is the search bar. So the search bar now lives at the top area here, right in this text section. I can just select this and it will open up this search bar. Now I can also use a keyboard shortcut to access my search bar. It is simply Command and F on your keyboard and that will pull up my search bar there. And speaking of looking for different images, we also have this brand new breadcrumb bar right at the bottom here. We can use this to immediately go back into a specific area that we were working on earlier. And we can also use this arrow to access different folder paths, favorites, all of the albums that we've ever created, and also recent folders and recent photographs. Another thing that's been updated is the view modes down at the bottom here. So no longer do we have all of these different view modes, we can simply access them by just opening up this arrow here. So if you're looking to access the film strip view mode or compare view mode, those all live down in here within this arrow right there. And you can access those different view modes there. And one last update inside of browse here are the catalog folders options. So whenever we create a catalog folder or we modify a catalog folder, we can now adjust specific options for that folder. So let's head up to our catalog folders here and I'm just going to right click a catalog folder and I'm gonna choose catalog properties. Within our catalog properties, we can now adjust how our catalog folders are operating in the background and how they preview the different images. Now remember, you can also modify these at any time just by right-clicking and opening these catalog properties, but this properties dialog will also open up anytime you drag a folder into your catalog folder section and you create a new folder there. So those are all of the updates to the browse module. Remember, we have our module pickers on the left now. We can adjust the browse legacy tab. The search bar has been moved up to this top region there, which you can also access with Command and F on your keyboard. We have this all new breadcrumbs bar at the bottom that we can use to instantly go back into a group where we can access recent folders or files. 
And the view modes down here are now compiled into this group area there. So let's grab a photograph here. I'm just going to head into my flowers and plants. We'll just grab this image and we'll head into the edit module and let's go over some of the updates to the UI inside of the edit module. So inside of the edit module here, let's just take a look at the left hand side of our screen at our tools because the tools behave and are grouped a little bit differently than they were in previous versions. So let's grab our masking brush here. You'll notice that when I grab my masking brush, it's enabled there, but I don't see that top tool modifier bar. Well, that's because it's automatically hidden for us in the new version. So if we want to view that, let's just hover over the top and we can see that modifier bar there. Now, if you want this to always be revealed, all you have to do is head up to the top menu, choose view and disable this auto hide tool option bar. Now the tool option bar will be always revealed whenever you're editing and modifying those tools. Another difference in the tool well compared to previous versions is that the tools are grouped a little bit differently. So for example, if I go into my retouching tools and I view this top modifier bar, I have the two most common tools there, the healing brush and then the perfect eraser. But if I want more of those tools within that group, I just need to access this arrow there and I have those other tools that live in there as well. And this works for any of the other tool well categories within that left hand side. Another quick thing about the tool well is that the masking brush is the only brush within photo raw. Now there's no longer a portrait brush or a local adjustment brush. It's just the masking brush and it works for anything that you're trying to brush away or brush in. Another update to the UI inside of the edit module is the layers pane. The all new and improved layers pane here allows us to modify the size of the layers pane so that we can fit as many different layers within our edit as we need to. So if we have a bunch of different layers in here and we need to sort of view their contents and things like that, resizing this is really, really helpful for viewing all of that. Another update within layers is having text as their own layers now. So we can now add text here with just this T. We can select that and we now have our own text layer there that we can then go in and modify, mask and adjust. Another update to the UI inside of the edit module is the all new properties inspector, which allows you to view your masking and blending options. So for example, if I add in a filter here. We'll just add black and white. Now, if I go into the masking options for that filter, this could be a local adjustment or a layer, but if I now access my masking options, it pulls up this properties inspector here within my properties here. I have different tabs. I have my blending masking. And then if I've modified text, I can adjust the text within there as well, but I have all of the same masking controls. I can invert the mask, I can create a luminosity mask, I can view the mask, so on and so forth. But all of that lives directly inside of this properties inspector now, rather than living inside the actual filter or the local adjustment or that layer. Another update is at the bottom here with our preview icons here. We have all new preview icons here where we can show or view the mask, we can view the preview bar here and we can toggle this to the left and the right and view our before and after there. And then we also have this just preview before and after icon. And one thing about using the backslash key on our keyboard to view the preview is that you just hold it down now rather than tapping it and then tapping it again to turn it off. You just hold down the backslash key on the keyboard and that will view that preview. And as soon as you let go of that key, it's going to show you the edit. And one last update here to the UI inside of the edit module are these icons down at the bottom. So reset, resetting all of the settings is now just an icon there. We have cancel, which will just end the session and not save any of those edits. And then we have the save option, which will save the edits and then take us back into the browse module. 
So that is the new UI within On One Photo Raw 2024. It's nice and clean now. It's taken away all of the unnecessary actions and buttons that we didn't really need in the previous versions. And it's just cleaned everything up and made it much easier to access and to find. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next sneak peek.